Folks, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, you had an earthquake there along the Mendocino Triple Junction. Originally, they said it was probably a magnitude 5.0. It was revived uh, to a magnitude 4.9. It was also revised to a, mag um, to a depth of 6.2 miles. And the number of people that are saying that they felt this earthquake has been increasing. This area is the most seismically active region of the San Andreas transform system. You can see it down here at the bottom and then over to the left it merges into the Mendocino fracture zone. We have two different types of faults here. Two tectonic plates which are sliding past one another. A transform fault is what they're calling this location is when a fracture zone that exists between two different offset spreading centers that connects spreading centers to deep sea trenches in the subduction zone. The Mendocino Fault forms a south facing scarp some 5,000 to 10,000 feet in height. Yeah, you can see how it increases over here. The Mendocino Fracture Zone extends west from immediately offshore of Cape Mendocino, California for at least 2,500 miles. Let's bring that out. Okay, look at that. That is one long fault zone. The Mendocino Triple Junction, this point, where three faults and three plates meet, is considered the most seismically active area in California. The three faults meet, meeting are, is the Cascadia subduction zone, the San Andreas subduction zone, and the Mendocino fracture zone. The blue line drawn out here is the Cascadia subduction zone. The three tectonic plates is the Pacific plate, the North American plate, and the Gorda plate. This here is the Gorda plate. To the right is the North American plate. And then over here, we got the Pacific Plate. The Gorda Plate is subducting underneath the North American Plate. As it subducts under the North American Plate, yeah, the crust of um, that plate melts and then it comes up in the form of the volcanoes. All the volcanoes from Lassen Peak and up to British Columbia are because of this subduction zone. Simultaneously, we got the Pacific Plate grinding past the North American Plate along the San Andreas Fault Zone, right here. The Pacific Plate is pushing past the Gorda Plate, which is up over here, right there. Let me bring it back out along the Mendocino Fracture Zone. On USGS website, 202 people said they felt this earthquake, and you can see here they're indicating spreading. Here we have the felt reports. Looks like the farthest is Crescent City. Yeah, I did a report about up over there. They got um, nuclear waste buried. Yeah, not good. Right close, 20 feet up um, off, off of the coast. And if they have a tsunami, yeah, it could be devastating. Let's see, the farthest would probably be um, Albion. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Let's see. And the farthest inland would be Red Bluff. The earthquake occurred at 7.09 a.m. And they gave it an intensity level of 3, which means it was felt noticeably indoors. Yeah, a lot of kids and parents getting ready for work or off to work and getting ready for school. Many people might not have thought about or recognized it as an earthquake. Standing automobiles rock slightly, vibration like a passing truck. They did send out a shake alert, 18, almost 19 seconds, it looks like, after the earthquake. Initially, it shows it right here. They thought it was a magnitude 5.4, and then it was revised. Um, they're saying a 
but down here it says a 5.1. Those that may have gotten the shake alert was Fortuna, Eureka, Fort Bragg, um, San Francisco. I don't know. Because over here, let me bring this up. Uh, and I'll pull it over. It shows the area of Eureka. As you know, any earthquake could be a foreshock for something much larger. In Humboldt County, I got to give them a big uh, high five. They put out a, a revised uh, tsunami um, area map where different areas could be impacted by tsunamis. Um, it's an interactive map. You can move it around. Um, show. Let me bring it in a little bit here. Shows areas that you could be living that could be impacted by tsunamis. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, anything in yellow. Yeah. Um, Klamath it shows here. Uh, let's bring this down. Then I'll bring it down some more. Um, what is that? Redlands Beach it says. I'm not sure. And we'll come down farther. And I want to go all the way down to the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, let's see here. Let me pause this for a second. Okay, there we go. All right, let's bring this into... Uh, yeah, that's all areas in yellow that could be impacted by tsunamis. That's the San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley, uh, Richmond. Let me come down here. Palo Alto. Um... Half Moon Bay. Let's zoom in there. Yeah. See, it shows the roads, too, which is really good. The different highways. Okay, I'll bring it up. And we got Monterey. California. Um, I can't read that. What beach that is. Um, we'll come up a little bit farther. But they are really taking uh, the threat of a large earthquake and tsunami very serious. Yeah. Oh, Devil's Slide. I think that's Devil's Slide. Yeah, Devil's Slide. Okay. Yeah. But I'll give you a link to this map. And it talks about things you can do. Let me bring it out. Look at over here. Uh, things you can do to prepare. Uh, Shelter Cove. Uh, Lindemar. Look how far inland there, down there in Pacifica, um, that a tsunami could come in. Look at that. Yeah. I used to live down there years ago. Um, I had a house that I rented there in Lindemar. Yeah. And we'll come up. Rockaway Beach. Okay, and I'm, I don't know, you might be thinking I'm spending too much time on this, but uh, years ago, yeah, let's see, we got Fairview, Fairview Drive. Uh, when I lived in Pacifica, um, the fire department was built right on top of one of the uh, fault zones there. Well, of course, they built it before they knew that there was a fault zone. Uh, let's see. This is all Pacifica. We do have followers in our group, uh, members of our community, uh, that live there in Pacifica. Yeah, so you might want to review this this map and take a look at it. Uh, let's see. We come up Pacific Manor. Okay. Yeah, look at all the homes and the roads that were impacted by um, the storms recently that they had down there um yeah and you think if you have a tsunami oh my goodness um yeah you need an evacuation plan um you probably just have maybe just minutes notice to evacuate this area here is daily city and uh thornton state beach okay this here is the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, somewhere over here is the San Francisco Zoo. 
let's see we got um yeah look at all the homes that are in that area balboa street yeah um you know you are overdue for a large earthquake here we got uh oh the cliff house that's where the cliff house is at okay I don't think they're open anymore. I heard they were shut down. I believe this would be the uh, San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. And then, um, yeah, there by the ferry building and all that. The Marina District. You have to take into account also if there's a large earthquake that your evacuation routes may be blocked by debris this here is the Oakland Bay Bridge and yeah I was wondering if I could find Foster City yeah a lot of this area too would turn into uh, quicksand liquefaction so I want to go back up towards where the earthquake occurred and this is Eureka Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can see the roads. Humboldt Hills. And they say if you're in the yellow zone, you need to have an evacu evacuation plan. Yeah. This here is Ferndale right there. Let's come in a little bit. So did you feel this earthquake? Please put your comments down below. How long did it last? Uh, what was the shaking like? A lot of people said it just felt like a vibration wasn't intense. Only one report was sent in to EMSC from Fortuna. Um, a little roller shook my wind chime. I have hanging in my house to check for quakes. That's smart. I got several of those too in my house. And if they go off, yeah, I know it's probably an earthquake because um, the cats can't reach them. <laughs> yeah, please put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please share this video. Yeah, it might be some important information that people would like to know and save lives. Make sure you're still subscribed. Yeah, multiple channels have been talking about how people are being unsubscribed from their channels. And when they resubscribe... The next day, they're unsubscribed again. I think it's just the way that um, those of us who um, have monetization ads on our videos for them to, um, yeah, not pay us. <laughs> There's at least two people that I follow who have reached um, 100,000 subscribers who haven't even received their plaques and will not get plaques um, because they say there is problems with their channel. So I'm probably one of the lucky ones where I got my um, plaque for 100,000 subscribers before they started uh, restricting and censoring and things like that. Yeah, it's really bad. So make sure you're still subscribed. I don't know if it'll help or not to keep you subscribed. Uh, thumbing up the video might help. I don't know. But sharing definitely helps. Um, please stay safe and I will talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.